Shesky here, and welcome to Fantasy House. This is the world's number one make-believe real estate podcast. I love doing this show because every week we get to go on a guided tour through a different person's imaginary dream home. They're always pushing the limits with mind-blowing houses and weird technologies and magic and all that cool stuff. They make weird, unique rooms. And, you know, I ask them, I'm like, hey, could you like come up with like appliances and technologies that we don't even have so they can solve like your very unique problems. People do that. And and really it's just good old fashioned creativity and silliness. Fantasy House podcast is NSFW. It's not safe for work, although we're super Mr. Rogers inspired. It's a lot more of an adult Mr. Rogers experience. So it's raw. It's honest. We talk about sex, drugs, people's bathroom habits. Sometimes people take us to dark places and we're all about like authenticity and really reigniting that carefree, playful spirit we had when we were four or five years old. You know, just fearless exploring of our imaginations and ourselves. Do you remember that? I love that. I feel like we need that as adults too. And that's what I want to facilitate with with Fantasy House. I want to, I want to inspire people to explore that again, get that feeling, that little fire lit inside for story time and imaginary make believe time and just being ourselves. And it really is a great time in Nathan Hurd's episode. He has a zero gravity room. So you just go in the room, flip a switch and you're floating around. Jade Catapretta uh, has a lazy river going through her fantasy house that has sexualized dolphins in it. Hmm? Fifi Dosh has a private hot tub on top of a private mountain in her backyard. John and Tom from Chad Goes Deep, their fantasy house is actually a cloud that floats around like an RV in the sky. Uh, so they can go anywhere they want. Nick the Plumber, he's got a live studio audience. So when he's with his family and he drops the punchline of one of his dad jokes, he gets a real applause. Joel Jimenez loves to cook and, by the way, is an amazing cook. Uh, but in, in Joel, Joel Jimenez's fantasy house, he doesn't want to clean up. He hates cleaning up. Loves to cook, hates cleaning up. Well, he's, he's got a kitchen that washes itself. Uh, in episode 94, Mike Ishak's kitchen is just a portal to his aunt's Indonesian kitchen so he can have ringdung anytime he wants, which I've never had ringdung in real life, but we had it on his episode imaginarily. And if it's anywhere as delicious as it is fun to say, it's got to be good, right? Ring dung. Uh, Jeremiah Watkins did a Halloween episode, and his uh, toilet paper dispenser is a mummy that you just unwrap and wipe your butt with. Nat Bay Mel doesn't even have a bathroom. Speaking of bathrooms, he simply has a wizard. That anytime you need to go, it, the wizard appears and just makes your bowels empty. Just abracadabra, poof. Or poop, poop, poof. So cool, right? Every episode is brought to you by me, John Shevsky. I am your local Southern California realtor. Not just a fantasy realtor, no, a really real realtor. And I would love to help you with anything real estate related, whether you're thinking about buying a house, selling a house, maybe you're interested in why I love multifamily apartment buildings, any of that. I would love to be of service. And if you're thinking, John, I don't care about real estate at all. That's great. But I know you know someone who does. And you got to let them know. You got to say, hey, before you go making any moves, you got to talk to my boy, John Shevsky. He's a really real realtor and he would love to be of service. And I really would. And even if you're not in SoCal, I can still help you because I have a referral network all over the country with some fantastic agents and it's growing all the time. So check in with me. Let me know because I got agents in Nashville, in Chattanooga, Austin, Texas, Boise, Idaho, Phoenix, Arizona. Like I got you covered. And like I said, that list is just growing. So just think of me when you're thinking of real estate. Be like, you know, I'm going to hit Chevsky up before I do anything. Just send me an email, fantasyhousepodcast at gmail.com. I'd love to be of service or help in any way. My guest today is my good friend, hilarious Jackie Gold. She has an album coming out. It's called Maximum Occupancy, which is kind of perfect for this um, real estate podcast. So I'm pretty stoked about that. And I cannot wait to hear about her fantasy house. So in the words of the great Angelo Bowers, let us do this. Hi. Hi. The album is actually already out. People can stream it and listen to it if they want. They can stream Maximum Occupancy they can right now. stream Maximum Occupancy on any platform that they enjoy. Or so Spotify or... Podcast right like, now. Like, this is going to be funny. But what you need to do is just pause this, download her album, <laughs> and start laughing right now. Where do they get the album? Where can people get 
Uh, I mean, if they want to purchase it, which is quite lovely, they could do, you know, Amazon and iTunes and all that jazz. Uh, but they could just listen to it on Spotify, on, I guess, the Google Play, on, I don't know, whatever else. What else do people listen to music on? Ask Alexa. You can ask Alexa to play uh, Jackie Gold. Don't do that in front of your kids. Um, we're we're, we're going to do it over Passover dinner. We're... You should. And the first one's going to be like, you ever choking on a dick? <laughs> Is it too, is it like super NSFW? No, I mean, it, there's a, uh, there's definitely cursing. It's not literally that terrible. There's some, there are some tracks that are a little filthier. I'm excited to hear it. I'm going to make, make my luncheon a little bit. I'm, I'm going to go, I'm going to go check it out then. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, okay. I recommend listening it? in order. It was like recorded live. So I like it listening in order, but I mean, sometimes random shuffle can always be fun. I'll listen to it in order. I will People do you the honor. Um, whatever but, you prefer. What did it feel like, like making an album? That's such a cool milestone as a comic. Uh, it's stressful because I think all comics, everyone always, I think a lot of creatives are very um, self-conscious and doubt, like doubt themselves. So even though I'd been doing comedy 10 years when I recorded it, I'm still was recording it going, who the hell am I to think that I get to record an album? Yeah. Like, I, I think there was still this like thing of like, who do I think I am that I am allowed to do this? Totally. <laughs> I'm like, there's no demand for it. <laughs> like, nobody's asking me to do this. And you're, you're young still. Like you, the fact, like you say, oh, I've been doing comedy 10 years, but like Kurt Metzger said in an interview, he was talking about when they were like, um, they were accusing Amy Schumer of, of, of stealing a joke or something like that. And he was talking about her who had been, at the time been doing it like 10 or 12 years. And he's like, she's only been doing comedy like 10 or 12 years. Like, what do you expect? Like, she's going to be saying stuff that everyone like is already saying because you, you're, you're still young in comedy. And I was like, it hit me where I was like, oh, like a decade at standup doesn't even sound like a lot to like someone like Metzger who's been doing it for so long. So it's like, you're still young in comedy. I have to remind myself of that because I think there's always that, you know, like if somebody goes to law school and gets like, their, like there's something to show after four year milestone, eight yeah. year milestone. Like, and we don't have any of those like flagpole moments that, yeah. you know, you get to be like, okay. I, I, and I think that's the hard thing is there's, I am always like, did I earn this? Like, I think I'm always waiting for someone like waiting for permission for someone yeah. to be like, no, you're allowed to do this now. Like yeah, you, yourself. you yeah. have made it to this moment. Um, but when I was doing it, it was really fun. The adrenaline was really high. Um, in a weird way, it felt like a school performance. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I had that like nervous, like high school play anxiety, yeah. uh, like waiting back there to like go out and like, you know, it was just, but um, yeah, it was, it was exciting. Do you have a favorite bit in there? Like, is there one that stuck out there? Like, I love this. The bookends are my favorites. So basically like the beginning of the album and the end of the album are like my, are my favorite parts. Uh, The middle of the album is still like fine and funny, but a lot of those were also like jokes that I didn't even do anymore, but I'm like, if they don't make it on this album, they're never going to be heard again ever. (laughs) So you need to just have them out because they're never going to be said again. (laughs) Like, I think even when I was doing them at the live show, I'm like, is this how the joke goes? I think this is. (laughs) I love that though. And you just, because I'm like, well, like burning the material. Yeah. I'm like, these are never going to be uttered from my mouth ever again. I have Um, the same feeling when I quit stand up. (laughs) I was like, I was like, this shit, no one's ever going to hear this. Oh, you record an album? No, I just quit stand up. Uh, (laughs) I think it's also like, honestly, like why sometimes I don't like letting go of like, there'll be a premise, like an idea of a joke that I like so much. And it's so hard to like, let it go because then I'm like, if I don't, but no one will ever know I thought of this idea. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) Even though it has not worked. I'm like, no one will ever know I thought of this. That is definitely one of the weirdest parts about being a stand-up where you like you, you, your ego or just like your excitement over like the alchemy of a, of a thought is like, so it's so tangible. It's so you can taste it. Like the, just yeah. the, like someone needs to know. I thought of this, like, you're like, what is that in a, it's like, is it, is it my mom not listening to me when I was a it's kid? That validation. Like, I'm like, I thought of this. There's some sort of validation. Totally. Because then you hear a comic tell a joke that's like not even the same as what you were thinking of, but in the, a similar wheelhouse. And you're like, I should have kept my joke. Oh, totally. <laughs> now, if I ever bring this joke back, they're going to think I took it. Oh, like it's, I, t- I agree. That's so a crazy. Much. Yeah. Which like, is also I, like with Angelo, like I never understood how Angelo could say a joke and then never say it again. Oh yeah. I'm like, it got a huge laugh. How would, how do you let that go? Because the, the rush for him is, was 
is from what I understand from our, our late night conversations. And I mean, he, he was thrilled at the creation, like the, being a wizard with a, and like watching it come to life, like, you know, what do they call when like wizards have their staff yeah. and they go, and it like creates a golem or it creates a thing like that it has its own life. Like that to him was exciting. And um, I, I think both, uh, both him and myself, like there was definitely a feeling of like, you feel guilty using a joke more like after it worked that one time you feel like it doesn't feel as, um, which I think is wrong, Sincere. but yeah, yeah, but there feels like something like that. It's contrived and like, you already did that joke and it worked, but you're lazy if you don't come up with another killer tonight. And yeah. uh, you know, that could be good or bad depending on what kind of artist you are. But yeah, he, he was definitely hilarious at just writing. He was, see the thing he was really good at though, is that he wasn't really good at writing bits. And I told him he would have been great if he would have wrote bits. I, was, I used to tell him like, green by you could, you could write, he would be like, I can only write dick jokes. I'd be like, no, you could, if you told stories, dude, like, the, it yeah, would the same craftsmanship for your stories. I would right? love to hear him about him, like going to the dentist and like farting or like, you know, like accidentally flashing someone with his giant penis, like would have been a great, like I would sit there like you would for a Ralphie Mabit for 20 minutes yeah. to get to the end. But he was so good at just knowing like, no, I like set up a punch, like Mitch Hedberg, Ronnie Dangerfield. And he could, he liked the process. Like he would go to the um, Americana or the Grove and go to Barnes and Noble and just people watch and look through magazines and see what's the latest article. What did Alec Baldwin get interviewed for in Vanity Fair? And then quickly write like a silly twist the end up. And for him, that worked out really well to just constantly have, he should have been a writer on a show. Like it just had like brand new material. I remember at the Memorial, Anthony, Anthony Jeselnik saying like, it's such a shame because he's definitely a guy I would have wanted to steal the material from or I would have wanted yeah. to have write for me. I mean, and, you know, and I, you know, that's a great compliment when you hear that too. That actually was one exciting thing when I did the album was I had a nugget of a joke and I said it at the album recording and I basically told a joke for the first time at the recording so cool. And it came out and it came out great and it has never sounded as good since. That's funny. And so I think that's some, burn it? you didn't want to burn that joke because you just said it one time for the album. And I, I and you know, it's funny because since then it, it had developed a little bit more, but it's already on record yeah. of like how it had been said, but there's something organic about the first time you tell a joke because the adrenaline and the energy that you're putting behind to sell that joke oh. is so not just not natural. It's so, um, what's the word I'm, I'm looking for? It's so genuine. Like the excitement you have behind like telling this joke and the motivation and the energy, it's so authentic and so genuine that I think that's what happens every time we tell the joke afterwards is us trying to recreate that same authenticity each time to make it sound like it was the first time. Yeah. But that very first time that you say it and you're selling it to the audience and it works, there's something about that authenticity that like cannot be repeated, totally. which is so good. I, I, love, I mean, just, just us saying it right now, I haven't done the spot in two yeah. years. And just us saying it right now, I can feel you that can. rush of how you feel when you're on stage and you're yes. like, you know what else? And then the tingles. <laughs> Oh my, it's well, because I had part of the joke and I said it. And then all of a sudden this like second part of it just came out and I'm like, Oh yeah, that's why this. And then I'm like, Oh, and it, and I, I never sold it as well as I did. Yeah. Like as I was discovering it for the first time on, on stage. But, yeah. Oh God. It makes me so excited. I want to do stand up so bad. Just <laughs> talking about it right now. I'm like, Oh, but it's like, a, I'm like an addict at an AA meeting or whatever. I'm just like, I want to, but yeah, I'm feeding. Uh, but you can't ruin my life right now. Yes. <laughs> I can't go back. To You're that. like, I will lose my wife and kids. My, my sponsor will be so disappointed in me. Um, <laughs> what, Let's get uh, back to Fantasy House. This, no, this is Fantasy House. This is this oh, it part. is? Okay. This is, this is the part of Fantasy House where you revealing these things about yourself is what makes, a, I think, it makes the listeners uh, get to know you a little bit more. So then when you are telling us and describing your house to telling us about it, they it's more interesting to know about your house after hearing this, finding out like, Oh, Jackie's a stand up comic. She just put in an album. This is how she feels about new material. This is how she, you know, that kind of stuff I think is what makes it more interesting when you're describing the house. Okay. Well, good. So I you, thought that I was just boring you to death. Oh my God. No. Do I look bored? Are you That's autistic? Are you not able to read my, my body language? I'm having a great time. Dude, Did I've you been say waiting. artistic or autistic? Uh, Was that autistic? <laughs> Are you autistic? Somebody had a joke about that. that it's hard to tell if a New Yorker is saying their child is artistic or autistic. autistic. My yeah. son is so autistic. That's you should so see funny. his drawings. <laughs> you know, maybe not. Thank you, though. Um, <laughs> uh, why don't you describe your fantasy house? Take us to it. Pretend like we're flying the orange drone over it and looking down 
what, where's it at? Would be my fantasy house. Oh my uh, I don't know if it's just like if my expectations aren't that high because I just grew up like middle class, but my idea of like a fantasy house <laughs> is just like, look, there's marble. <laughs> I love marble. Come on. Like just like small, beautiful amenities that like uh that people have where I'm like, oh my god, look at this grand what would be a um so from TikTok on the the app called the Tiki Talkie, yep. there is a trend where someone goes, Tell me something that is cool or unique about your house. And then people will literally show there is one of the coolest things I saw was that somebody had a, um, what looked like a water fountain, but it was like a coffee bar. So basically you would just put a glass like under a faucet, put in what kind of like latte you wanted. And literally like a coffee mm-hmm. would just be made right there in front of you. Okay. Like it's not a Keurig. It's just a, like a spout <laughs> like, oh God, and it would so make funny. whatever like coffee or latte you wanted. Um, so I feel like that would be in my fantasy house. Um, I, I'm someone who's impressed whenever I see someone has a hot water dispenser at their sink. <laughs> oh, dude. Well, like, I'm like, impressive. oh, that's class. Listen, I grew up middle class and I live middle class and that is yeah. still impressive. I mean, I'm like, Ooh, a hot water dispenser. <laughs> um, hey, so that's yeah. why I feel like my, maybe my fantasy house isn't as fantasy. Cause I feel like all the things that are rich people normal would be my fantasy mm-hmm. house. Like, I want to walk in and have like a grand foyer where, you know, you look up and it's just like a pretty chandelier where you have no idea how anybody cleans it. Just like this (laughs) beautiful chandelier. Um, I just, I would love like, I I don't know. Like, Can you describe a beautiful chandelier just so I have an idea of it and our listeners I want it to have like what looks like what could be like crystals or glass. Mm-hmm. hanging you know that like everything is shimmering off the light mm-hmm. but it's it's just like it's my my grandmother had this light that I always thought was crystal hanging off of it of course now I found out that it's it was plastic um <laughs> she had this our, lamp all of our babies and, <laughs> and it looked like now you look at it and you're like was this like a gypsy like it either looked like a gypsy whorehouse yeah. of like this light bulb but hanging from the lights were like four crystals which now I know are plastic, but four yeah, crystals nothing, just but literally almost the best for us. <laughs> looks like beaded skirts hanging around the lamps. Yeah. Um, and I remember saving it because I thought it was the classiest thing ever. But that, but as a giant chandelier, uh, when you walk into this beautiful grand, like white uh, marble, um, I don't know if I necessarily love marble. The floor might maybe could have some marble, but oh, just yeah. beautiful white, pristine uh foyer and I think that's why I love the idea of just like a big grand door. I I feel like these don't sound so imaginative. Oh, um that's great. I, well but I just a fountain in there like we're drinking so much cappuccino right now that like we feel imaginative regardless if it is or not. I mean and that latte machine I mean any type of milk you want almond <laughs> soy coconut however you want your latte made. Oh I'm partying I'm traditional today. I'm I'm getting cream in there. Yes. Yeah. Um I want something like that. Um, my friend, Mary Bamba, who is an architect, she, uh, or designer architect, she always said, and I think it's a great ass idea. She would want a slide from her room mm-hmm. oh, yeah. down into a ball pit. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Like a McDonald's yeah. ball pit. And I think I would love that. That's awesome. Like, like just being like, like, okay. Colorful balls that we're flying into and just like, yeah, that just. Yeah. To be like, oh, it's time for work. And you like, just like open up, like you just go to like this little I would feel like an Alice in Wonderland door in the corner of your room and you open it up and you just slide down into a McDonald's uh, ball pit. I love that. That's so great. I love this. Minus the kid you're in and the vomit. (laughs) Yeah, this is clean. This is at your house. I mean, that's literally on the cover art for Fantasy House on the the podcast cover art. There's a slide in there. I don't have a ball pit. It goes into the garage, but it's it's part of the design because it's so, it is so, I love sliding on stuff. I love like giant slides anywhere. So good for you that's freaking bad. i love, I would love something like that i think it's just so fun um yeah what else i mean like again like take us to the kitchen so we can have an imaginary meal please Ooh, what would be the like kitchen well can i tell you the one thing i 
dislike that I see yeah. in, in, because again, like in all these fantasy homes that I see that people create, they do the faux kitchen. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've seen that where it's like, they have the kitchen that you see, but, and it, the reason it always looks pristine is because that's not the kitchen they cook in. Uh-huh. There's like a pantry door and you open that. And then there's like the real kitchen behind it. Yeah. The secret, like almost like a secret office kind of like a, like a thing, but it's a kitchen. Yeah. Like a butler's kitchen. Yeah. I dislike that. To yeah, me, that makes why. no sense. I think it seems very wasteful. Um, but also I feel like the whole idea of like being at someone's house and cooking is you see them in the act of cooking, like yeah. to see, I don't like this illusion of mystery of like, Oh, look at that. Like, look, my, my kitchen has never been used. It's all pristine and, and Cloroxed. And totally. here's your, you know, cookie cutter meal. I think there's some beauty in seeing someone's you like a house that's used in its intent. So it's also fun for communal situations. So like when, when someone is cooking, sorry, my cat scraped my arm. I'm no, no about. worries. I was just what? watching cat hair float around you. <laughs> <laughs> That's just how good these webcams are these days. <laughs> I would. I was like, oh, there's a fuzzy. Like, like that or you have a lot of spirits haunting you. Oh, it's so funny. Well, probably both. Probably um, a little bit of but, both. But um, yeah, the, 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 the communal aspect of getting together with people and, and cooking and eating together and being like, like, what are you doing over there? And like, that's one of the, one of my favorite things, you know, th- they joke about it on South Park and everything like that open concept kitchen. It's like one of the coolest things that's here to stay in our culture is like, oh yeah, people like communal eating. The old days it was, you know, it was a male, male would watch TV or do something out there with the guests and the female would be in the kitchen doing, and yeah. that's changed thankfully. And now it's like, Hey, like we can sit around a bar or in the kitchen around the island or, or do those kind of things. So I, I'm with you on like, there's no need for a secret kitchen unless there's something really fun about it. You know, people do have their own ways, but yeah, like I could see it. Like if you're catering like a giant dinner for 20 and then like, I think then it's, I guess kind of like the old days when the wife would be in the kitchen, there was almost like this mystery of like, you don't know how she does it. Like, you know, like nobody could see how she whipped together this meal yeah. probably because like she was trying to hide the fact like it's just Betty Crocker. Yeah. <laughs> like it was just like microwave mashed potatoes that she was like, she wasn't slaving over the stove. Um, the fire Chinese food. Yeah, exactly. Just like taking it out of the container. Well, maybe in that case, a hidden kitchen, not so bad. That would, Ooh, that would be a fantasy for me. Okay. Um, if we're defying all laws of like relativity, I would love a kitchen where you just went, I'm in the mood for pad thai. And then all of a sudden, like you just had pad thai. Oh my God. I would love that. Well, what, would we, like what a, would we do today then if we had that? So we like, a, jet, like we... a Jetsons kitchen. You know what I mean? Of just being like, okay, I want sushi. And like whatever sushi I wanted could just like appear. I just open up the fridge and there's the food I want. What would it be? <sighs> would it be sushi for you? I'll eat whatever you pick. Um, I think it would probably be sushi. Sushi or peanut noodles? Peanut noodles? I feel like there's never a bad time for peanut noodles. Are peanut noodles, is that like pad thai, like peanut sauce on top kind of Kind of, yeah. Like a peanut like a peanut sauce okay. noodles. Yeah, I, I could um, do those. I definitely would go for sushi though right now. Yeah. I, I want there to be something where it's like whatever you're thinking that you're in the mood to eat, that's what will appear in your um, yeah. kitchen. Sugar fish, salmon seared salmon i don't know if sugarfish will do it but i guess in your, in your fantasy kitchen i i'll just order sugarfish but seared yeah. and uh, some yellowtail for me please because i i have a i'm a mood-based eater so mm-hmm. i i will like i only learned about this recently i guess it's called like intuitive eater where like you only really eat based on like what mood you're in so i'm someone who'll be sitting there and then i go ooh. Ooh, I want this. And I'm like that all of a sudden I'm like, that's what I need to eat that's like awesome. right now. Yeah. I mean, if I don't get to have it, I can convince myself to have something else, but I'm someone who's like, Oh yeah. Oh, I want grilled cheese. And then like, that's all I will obsess about eating is like a grilled cheese until I get one. I, I totally with you on that. That yeah. sounds the, the So I, yeah, that would be amazing. If there was something, whatever you're thinking about eating that. So basically anything in my dream house only has to deal with the kitchen. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's honestly, that's what I've been moving the show towards. Cause my favorite times in this, in these shows and these episodes is going to your, uh, kitchens because when, when guests are coming up with these cool kitchens, I'm like, what's the imaginary meal? I'm like, that's my favorite part of the show. 
<laughs> it, it, honestly. In real life too, it's my favorite part. Like what kind of kitchen we got here? What are we eating? And I love yep. when people go like, I make this. And, you know, so this is exciting to like, just try, try your imaginary, uh, order whatever you want and see if she. And it's great because if, if you were a guest in my house and you were like, I'm in the mood for seared salmon, I'd be like, sure. And I just open up the, I had seared salmon for you. Yeah, yeah with ponzu. Like salmon. whatever yeah. you want. Good. It's a, I do have something that is not food-based. Okay. Do you remember in Clueless? I haven't seen when Clueless. When Cher. About the closet. The wardrobe. I, I can't, I'm guessing that I'm not the first female guest to say that they want the Cher closet. I feel so bad for even beating you to it. That was such. Oh my god, that's exactly. Yeah. Other people have said it. I haven't. <laughs> well, it's such a cool. It's such a cool. I mean, one. well, listen. You want to know who said it? Nate Heard. Really? <laughs> well, I think it's because he's blonde and shares blonde, and it's just. Is Nate blonde, or is he a flash of lightning? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so. Uh, so. So you're gonna you're getting dressed in front of uh what are you you're getting like dressed. But up. I, I I don't want to have to do work for the closet. So like I'm not gonna be the person like I wouldn't have programmed it. Like I'm not gonna sit there and input what all my clothes were. Like my closet just because that's so much work. But like either like the moment you put the clothes in the closet, the closet just immediately knows what's in there. Uh, or like let's say I brought it home, I scan what the tag is. So now my closet knows, like, I'm not going to sit there making a PowerPoint of like yellow plaid skirt, <laughs> like, total share, but um, <laughs> my closet just knows what's in there. And yeah. then I just like can pick an outfit and it, and I can see what it looks like on me. That would. Well, okay. So if you were showing us that right now, what would you try on the show? It's like, you got, you guys got to see this, like the film crew's there where you're giving us the the, the tour. What, what would you like? Oh, you got to see this. And then what outfit would you put on? What outfit would I put on? So I used to have a dream because I, I was obsessed with Barbies for oh, Martin Luther King quote. I used to, yeah, have a dream. I had a dream. He actually took that from me. Okay. Um, such a he stole my bit. I used to have a dream. I used to have a dream. He stole my bit. Um, I loved Barbies. I played with Barbies to like, and and in, <laughs> into <laughs> into teens. I loved Barbies, and I was always obsessed with Barbie clothes. And my dream would always be, I always thought it would be an awesome idea to make a clothing store that sold you the same clothes that your Barbie was wearing. Oh, that's Because Barbie had the best outfits, like, in the entire world. Oh, it's like the old Faith Hill song. Barbie had the best outfits. In the entire your world. Yeah. Okay. Um, that was the duet with Tim McGraw, right? That was That's right. the one she did with Tim. I usually go with the Randy Travis version of it. Though, <laughs> the Ken also had pretty good clothes too. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I feel like that would kind of be like, I could just pick out like a Barbie, like pick out an outfit. Describe, and describe which one. For some reason, I don't know why. Uh, maybe it's because we're talking about Clueless and Barbie, but I feel like it would it have to be a pink a pink little number, <laughs> um, Barbie, and yeah. so maybe like you know pink little pleather mini skirt. <laughs> oh my god! So. Yeah, like a pink matching jacket, it's probably with like a faux fur, like a faux fur pink around the thing. Uh, of course, like immediately like some pumps to match. Probably like I probably wear them with like black combat boots because. Yeah. You know, you gotta gotta bring the outfit down to earth a little bit. Oh, that's Can't how go. you do it. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that makes every that makes every dress feel grounded. Like if you're wearing a skirt, but you don't want to come across as like a pretty princess. Yeah. Combat boots. I love it. I that's got my good, combat right? boots on. You got your femininity, you know? but you also got your utility. That's a... probably a little like blossom bowler hat. <laughs> Yeah, you do look like a, a freak 90s kid with what you're describing. Oh my gosh, it's my, my fantasy. Oh, bowler cap. I, if I could just wake up as Clarissa explains it all, <laughs> it'd be my, be my jam. Uh, like a little bowler hat. I got, so I'm wearing my pink little outfit, combat boots, bowler hat, and like ready to start the day. So great. So yeah. great. Are there any other rooms or anything else we need to see in the house before we go? What are some other great rooms? Ah. Oh, here, what else would I love? Please. You know what else I think would be great? Um, I'm very indecisive as far as home decorating. Yeah. So I, I wish that I had something where like whatever style, like you're in, because you know how they say like you should make your room feel like a haven and like yeah. a resort. Like, 
So I feel like whatever mood I need for my house to be that night, like maybe like outside the keypad to like, before you go into the master bedroom, whatever yeah. type of mood you need, like, let's say I'm like, I need a tranquil night. Like that's say, that's say that's setting number five. I put that on the keypad before I go into my room and my room is immediately like transformed into a tranquil spa. So cool. Type setup. So the bed is whatever a, let's say all of a sudden now I have a canopy bed, you know, and it's draped with, you know, a beautiful white fabric and there's bohemian puff pillows on the floor. And like, you know, the light is low, the lavender um, aromatherapy is going, the light, you know, it's the room is whatever you need the room to be for like that moment. Yeah. Um, And let's say I have a setting that like, I want to wake up and have it be kind of like a, like a bohemian tropical thing. Like I want to wake up and feel energized in this like beautiful seaside um, Hawaiian retreat. Like that's the setting I wake up in. Like my room can change the decor. Everything just changes. Is that what it would be right now? If you were showing us, you're like, check this out. Here's this preset. You press the button. Oh yeah. And And then I'd be showing you like all the decor. So then all of a sudden, like I wake up, my bed is a completely different bed. Like it's like everything then like might look a little bit more tropical and sunny. Like I have that really cool, bold wallpaper that has like, you know, the flowers coming up. Oh, yeah. um, it looks like the old school comedy store green room. I was just going to say, that, that's that classic wallpaper. With the uh, palm it's, trees. Still, it's still in my yeah. magazines. I'll see it in fashion magazines. I'll be like, hey, that, that's the comedy store. There's yeah. got to be a name for it. It's like, it's like houndstooth. You just see it. it. Like, oh, that p- pattern is patented and everyone. Oh. And I have to tell you, it's actually a, a, a wallpaper pattern that I love and would oh, love yeah. to put somewhere in a room or, in a, or a house. But because all I have it now associated with is the comedy store, I cannot put that wallpaper up yeah. anywhere. Like I would, oh, it's just that immediate association for so me I too. My, I designed my guest bathroom to feel like I'm in flappers. I'm just joking. <laughs> uh, <laughs> or like you put the you put the scary clown faces oh, from weird. the comedy store bathroom in, oh. your, in your. Or yeah, like, let's it. say at night, you just want to feel, sometimes you don't, you want to feel like luxurious and royal when you go to bed. Like I put that setting in my room and then now I'm sleeping in like a beautiful velvet tufted bed of like dark blue velvet with like a beautiful damask bed You spread. have selected Jewish American princess mode. Yes. I'm a queen. That actually happened to me in Hawaii. I went to Hawaii and I was talking to someone because I always have my nails done. And I said, oh, I'm sorry. It's just a jappy thing of mine. And they just looked at me because oh, I was in know? Hawaii. And I went, oh, Jewish my Jap, Jap is different than your Jap. And they're like, what's your Jap? And I was like, Jewish American princess. <laughs> and they're like, it. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> that's different. We don't say it. God, and I was like, oh, yeah, before. sorry. It's so funny. You're like, yeah, it's just that. They're like, well, that still made, it triggered me. Yeah. It made me think of things that hurt my feelings. I'm like, no, sorry, motherfucker. I was just. Yeah. <laughs> I realized like outside the tri-state area yeah. of New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, like you cannot use Jap as a verb, as an adjective. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure you can't. I mean, I never hear people say it in SoCal. I feel like it's like an older generation thing, but I know of it. Like, it's just, it's super common. Jewish American yeah. princess is like a very common thing. But you know how modern times is. No, yeah. Like, and then like once I told them they were like, Oh, I get that, that's funny. But in Hawaii they were like, Yeah, no, uh, what jap? And I was like, Oh sorry. You need to think of an acronym for Hawaii that relates to that too. I, well, actually I was their first Jew they ever met when I was in Hawaii. I was like working with a lot of locals and they were like, I was like, Am I your first Jew? And they're like, actually, yeah. Am I your first Jew? <laughs> I, mean, I was like, my group, I was like, that. how's the experience? <laughs> Feeling my head for hordes. Oh, dude, it's so funny. They're like, so you guys drink baby's blood like all the time or just once in a while? Like, what are you Jews up to? Are you guys lizards? You shapeshifters? My, my, work? my friend who is Jewish is married to a non-Jewish guy and his, his like cousin or something came to visit their house and he was surprised that they were allowed to watch TV in the same room together. They thought that they could only watch TV if she held up the antenna in like a different, I don't know what he had pictured, but it was something about like, she couldn't be in the same room unless like, you know, and if she has her period, she has to hold the antenna in a different room. Like, actually, these are rules. Actually, I, I think we should adopt some of these rules. Yes. Okay. 
I'd, a hundred percent. I'd, I'd love to see if I could get my wife to do anything like that when she's on her period. I can't get her to do that when she's totally cool. I can imagine trying to. Well, she's yeah, not, she'd be. She'd be like, "Well, you're the Jewish one. You have to hold up the antenna." And I'd be like, "And I am mostly on the rag, babe. You're yeah. right. I'll right. I'll hold the antenna." If people only knew, like, it's like I don't know what crazy conservative Jews get their wives to do any of that stuff because every Jewish man I've ever known is the biggest cuck. Yes. <laughs> every Jewish man I know, they're like, "Oh, you are absolutely your wife's bitch." Um, so I don't know where all this like old school. I don't know school, if like, I think that's true huh? or not. I don't know if I well, think that's true. You might know more conservative Jews. I just know like everyone in my life was like, it, it, it's, and still even like Jewish dudes, I'm like, oh, your wife runs the show everywhere. And I hope I any think, people say well, not. You know, like, it's interesting because your wife runs the show and she's not Jewish. But I was going to say, I think like the strong personality is just very much, a, yeah. I mean, I don't even know if it's a Jewish woman thing, but like we had, tend to be very strong opinionated people. That's true. Uh, I mean, I mean, Jewish women are definitely opinionated. And I think, um, you know, who knows what, what I, I have no explanation for it in the culture of why things are one way or another for Jews specifically, but it's definitely funny how many people talk about like how, how, um, uh, women don't get to do this and women don't get to do that. And I'm just like, uh, everyone I know in a relationship, uh, their wife makes is like pretty much the captain is like, the one that makes in a successful role. relationship. Any yeah. dude that's like too pushy with their, their female uh, or even just a, a partner that is um, feminine. I was like, they're divorced. That never, lasts. that never lasts. It only lasts yeah. if you, if you believe in like the compromise of like uh, compromise is doing what, what my wife wants because yeah. <laughs> they're the bosses. You guys, uh, you know, you're, you're smart. Well, I think maybe, and I, yeah. this would be reading way too into it, but there is a, a Jewish expression called Shalom Bayit, which means like piece of the house or like, yeah. and basically it beats anything. So like, if like two men, like if a man's like, Hey, I need you to do this. And he goes, no, 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 no. For like Shalom Bayit, my wife, like it beats anything. Like you're allowed becomes, to use that as the, the excuse. Top card. You're just like, basically of like keeping the wife happy. No, nope, like, I got to keep the peace. Sorry. I'd love to go fishing with you on Thursday, but my wife won't let me. It trumps it. Shall I buy it? Got to do it. Sorry. You said you were, you get seasick easily. Well, yes, but it's mostly because my wife won't let me. Not because I don't want to go. No. Yeah. Um, w- this has been seriously such a rad fantasy house. Um, I feel like we didn't, we, did we miss things? I feel like uh, when well, I looked at- We didn't do your bathroom. We didn't do your bathroom, but I didn't want to pressure you if you, you don't want to. Okay. Can we do your bathroom and finish up there? We could finish up there, but did we do everything on the checklist? I feel like we missed something. No? We got to do kitchen. Okay. Kitchen and bathroom, and if you had one of the we have to do the checklist, I'm just saying. But I thought that we missed something. Um, Bathtub. It has to have a bathtub. Uh, Again, like my little, I guess that's like not, it's just like my middle class thing of like, does it have a standalone bathtub? But honestly, like, mm. Like I would love like just a bathtub that's just kind of almost like a queen bat, like what would be like a queen's bathtub in like the middle of the room, just kind of stand alone. It could be clawfoot. It could just be, it could be modern. I don't care what it looks like, but there has to be a nice, deep, relaxing bathtub Oh yeah, uh, to relax in. I feel like I would also want there to be a hot tub in somewhere in my house too. I would need to have a jacuzzi. Where it's got to go? We got you're you're describing it. You're creating this this make believe world. Where's it? Where is it going to go? I don't know if I want it outside. Um, I don't know where I would put this hot tub. Where would where would you recommend, realtor, that we put this hot tub or jacuzzi? I mean, if you could, if you had a great room, like if you had a big enough living room, yeah, it could be awesome to have an indoor uh, indoor jacuzzi, especially with, with a great room generally not always but generally when you are referring to a great room it has really tall ceilings and uh, i didn't even used to know what they were called i think i want to say like when i first started recording this uh caitlin uh rose was telling me like uh, you know like a great room it's like is that like a giant living room she's like exactly so uh, yeah, i would just room. think it'd be called the great room because like people just walk in and go like this place is this room is great <laughs> it really is the room of greatness it's where you have you you might have you might have a tv in there but more so you're going to have possibly a pool table but you're going to have couches facing um like uh, maybe a nice coffee table and probably have a, like a little bar in there something something where when you and your guests get together or when you're winding down you can really just sit down with a whiskey or a cocktail or something and just chill out but with really tall ceilings big windows, maybe a big fireplace. 
um, like I said, maybe a pool table or, or a dartboard or something, but it's, it's very large and it's, it's a, it is a room of greatness. And I haven't researched the actual reason they call it that, but you and I are gotta be, you know, uh, we've got to be uh, the etymology of it. We've got to be on the yeah. something. It's great. Yes. So yeah, I agree. Good. I've always wanted a house that would be the like house that people want to come to and like congregate at and hang yeah. out at. So I love the idea that of like, I don't, and I don't necessarily know if I'd want it like in a basement. Cause the moment I say basement, it makes me think of it as like dingy or like, no. I think of like the eighties, nineties, like wood paneled, like den. Oh, no. And I don't want it to be that. You don't but have to I would it. love like, as if there's like, not almost like a whole floor, but like what would take up like a whole floor on like a grand estate. And it would just have anything that like a friend of mine or anybody would want to come and do. So yeah. there might be the hot tub there, the pool there, pool table, ping pong tables, air hockey, uh, no, knock hockey, knock hockey. <laughs> I knock remember, hockey. You ever played knock hockey? Knocky? No. Um, it was basically like the wooden it would look like a wooden hand uh, hockey table and it would have, it was a wood thing and you had plastic um, sticks. Oh, like foosball, not... but with, like foosball, but with um, hockey. Bless you. Yeah. Like an air hockey table, but it, there's no air coming up. So it's just like a wood, um, oh, like a wood pre, thing. Pre and air, so, air table. I've never played that. Yeah. No, I love air hockey. Though. Maybe it was an East coast thing. Yeah, um, well, you grew up East coast, I think too. No, I, I grew up West coast. I mean, I've been oh. in New York many, many times in Chicago. I don't know why I thought that you like were, I don't know why I thought you were an East coaster. Oh, um, I was a funny stand up. That's why. I <laughs> uh, but either like a not hockey table. Um, I would definitely want like a, like a bar down there for my friends to congregate, have whatever drink they want. Maybe like oh, a, what would you make for drinks then? If, if we're, if you had a bar down there right now, we're gonna play uh, it would have like, it would be a, f- a full bar. So you can make like whatever drink you want, but also kind of like same idea, like my coffee thing, yeah. like whatever drink you're, you're, you're in the mood for it. I can pour thumb. you. And you <laughs> honestly, yeah. Well, can I see like, you know, when people have all the, the whiskeys hanging and they can yeah. just pour your own um, drink. I would probably also want to set up a, um, like a food court, what looked like a, like a bowling alley or roller ring food court. Oh, so yeah. whatever my friends are in the mood to eat, like could be there. So onion rings, uh, cheese dog, mozzarella, mozzarella stick. Would you say a food, a f- corn dog? Cheese dog. Oh, a corn dog too. Oh, a cheese dog. A cheese dog. dog. A corn dog. Um, a whiskey fountain. I'll have like 10 things. There'll be a, uh, there's a fast food place. That was my first job called Roland Roaster. And they have something called corn fritters. <laughs> Oh, and that yeah, would, yeah. I'd have corn fritters there oh, uh, and like a cheese cup that you can just dip everything in. <laughs> totally. Oh, dude. So just basically, I'd America. have this great room that everyone oh, can hang dude. out in. Just fat America food. You're like. And a pantry filled with every, um, every snack you ever loved, like as a kid, that was like a school snack. So Dunkaroos, Fruit by the Foot. Gushers, ding dongs, um, ding dongs, and twinkies. ding dongs, <gasps> devil dogs, devil dogs, devil dogs, devil like dogs. whatever you want would be in this pantry, and you could just have whatever you wanted. Thank you. Well, I'm stuffed on corn dogs, cheese dogs, yes. devil dogs, ding dongs, Twinkies, whiskey, coffee, and I'm going to throw that up into a basket somewhere because I'm coming back yes. in and I am going to eat so much sugar fish in that kitchen. You know what I mean? Well, maybe that would be part of the fantasy. If you ever read the, um, and I know we're wrapping up, but you ever, if you ever read, um, what is it? What's it called? The hunger games. No, but I'm hungry in the hunger games. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, one of the things is like the, the people who are like the haves and the have nots, but the people who are the haves, they feast and dine and dine and feast. And then they take this, like this, I wouldn't want this, but something similar. They take this pill that makes them throw up so that they can keep eating and eating and really? eating. I wouldn't want that, oh but God, I would want that you were able to take this pill and that way you don't get full or sick. So that way, whatever you want to eat in my house, you can eat without can feeling. Up? No, 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 no throwing up. I'm oh, just okay. stealing it from the, from the book where basically 
you can maybe take this little pill. And when you're in my house, like whatever you're eating, you don't get full. So you don't get that. Oh my God, I think I'm going to be sick feeling. Yeah. So you can eat all the sugar fish, all the corn dogs, Thank all you. the coffee, all the whiskey. And you don't feel sick <gasps> because you're just like, I could just keep going and going. I could eat whatever I want with no consequence. Doc, can you, doc, can you write me a prescription? <laughs> Instead of a morning after pill, it's the moment before pill that you take. It's and called that way you can... stuffing. I just need to be able to just, just stuff myself. Just it's not... called the no throw. No throw. Oh, can I get a no throw, doc? Can I get a no throw? I don't think you need it. No, doctor, please. Yeah. No, no, doc. I need a no throw. You if see, you my friend's found my house. prescription for the no throw. <laughs> You've got everything I want to eat at this house. Please, just let me. Please, just let, let me get my fix of no throw. Hey, that's a food addict right there. Please. Please, yeah. doctor, I will suck your dick. Just give me the nose from No throw. Um, so, yes. Okay. This has been an awesome fantasy house. I want people to Thank you to for having me. Oh, my gosh. It's been a long time coming. We've been trying to have this. For, we've had to cancel so many times. I'm so excited. So many it. times. I'm so stoked. Um, I'm so glad we were able to make it happen. Oh, dude. Me, me as well. Uh, listeners uh, need to know about your album again. Let's just remind them where, where Yeah. So, please, if you would like to listen to it, uh, it's called Maximum Occupancy on any other streaming app. So Amazon, Google Play, I'm sure Samsung has something, uh, Spotify, um, wherever you listen to or download or buy music, it will be there. It's Maximum Occupancy by Jackie Gold. Gold. The picture is my face with a tape measure to my mouth. So that's how you can find it. (laughs) That's uh, if you had any questions about if you should play this for your kid. Do not play it for your kid. The album cover is her face with a tape measure next to her mouth. Yes. And the funny thing is a friend of mine has it on shuffle. It never comes up unless he is in the car with his kids. And then when he has his, you know, music set to shuffle, without a doubt, I will come on every single time. Oh, it's so great. It's just like the timing of it. Always impeccable. (laughs) Well, thank you so much for doing this, guys. Thank you so much for having me. Any any friggin' time, we'll do another one in the near future. Guys, go ahead, check out Jackie Gold's album, Maximum Occupancy. Support her. Go follow her. We'll link her on the uh, Instagram page so you guys can get that. And uh, be silly, have fun. Go ahead, hit the the subscribe button. Be silly, have fun. Thank you. Thanks, Sean. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for making the time. Thank you.